This function takes a database of faces along with an image to be matched and computes the components of eigenvectors. Okay, so there's a lot of math involved, but don't worry, we'll go through all of it. The concept itself is rather simple. Let's start at the beginning. Back in 1964, Woodrow Wilson Bledsoe created one of the first facial recognition systems. He had a volunteer mark important facial characteristics and calculated the difference between the faces. The distance were input into a computer and facial recognition was born. Today it is used to identify criminals, allow access to secure areas, and even verify voter registration. Okay, okay. Let's get back to what we're doing. Here is the eigenface method broken down for you. You need to begin with a database of faces as well as a test image. Once the images have been checked and confirmed that they are grayscale, move right along to prepping the database of faces. In order to create the eigenfaces, the average face must be created. This is done by averaging each of the database images pixel by pixel. Each database image subtracts the average image from it. This leaves a matrix of database faces, which each face shows the unique difference between it and the average face. Each image should then be formed into a column vector and brought together into one matrix. The covariance matrix can be found by taking the average face difference and multiplying it by its transposed self. The covariance matrix is a matrix of comparisons. It compares each point to itself as well as another. The difference between an image lies on the difference of interrelated pixels, not individual pixels. Because only a subset of weights are actually valuable for our limited data set, taking A transpose A will return the same result in much quicker time. Once we have the covariance matrix, we simply find the eigenvectors and associated values. The values will help determine the importance of the eigenvectors. You may choose to take the first n number of eigenvectors to form n eigenfaces. Creating an eigenface is simple. First, you take the first eigenvector. This first element is multiplied by the first face in the database, which subtracts the average face. Then you take the second element and multiply it by that second face minus the average face. So on and so forth until you have completed all the calculations. Then, each plane is added together to form the eigenface. You can repeat this n times for n eigenfaces. Now that we have the eigenfaces, it gets a bit more complex. The idea from here is to project the face we're trying to match onto each of the n eigenfaces to find the weights of each image that make up the image. This approach means that the eigenfaces can also be used for reconstruction, as you can see here. Don't worry, we'll go through the steps carefully. The equation itself is rather simple. Now that we have the eigenfaces, average face, and the face to be matched, we simply plug and chug. The weights of the eigenfaces can be found by taking the projection or taking the transpose of each of the eigenfaces and multiplying it by the subject minus the average face. Make sure to subtract the average face. Not doing so will render decreased accuracy in results. You will then be left with n weights. In order to classify if something is a match, the last complex step comes into play. We need to compare the projection of the database faces with the projection of the matching face. So we do the same steps as the matching face, but with each of the database images, and we will store each of these column vector of weights into a matrix called weight space. To find a match, we are looking at the Euclidean distance between each weight. To find this, we copy the match face weights into a matrix, the same dimension of weight space. Then, point by point, we find the distance squared. The total distance is given by the sum along the columns. In reality, the actual distance is the square root of the sum, but the smallest square root is also the smallest squared. At this point, most of the math is complete. All that is left now is deciding if the face is a match. In order to do this, you simply set a threshold of distance. If the match is below the threshold distance, it is considered a match. There are two thresholds to consider before outputting whether the image is a match, not a match, or not in face space at all and that is a threshold of face space. What this threshold means is the Euclidean distance between your matching image minus the average face to bring out the uniqueness of the face versus the reconstructed eigenfaces found earlier. You find the Euclidean distance between these two, and this displays the accuracy of the recreation using the eigenfaces. If this is below a certain threshold, then you consider this match face in face space. For our purposes, we use the value of 2 times 10 to the 12th as the threshold for our program. If the value was less than that, the face would be considered in face space. If it was greater, it would not. 
The second threshold to consider is the quality of the match between the eigenweights from the database image that's the best match and the eigenweights from your matching image. We chose a threshold of 2 times 10 to the 15th. If it was lower than this, we considered it a match. If it was greater, we did not consider it a match from our database. Based on the results we gathered from our test samples, the program is about 60% accurate. On average, it was able to detect 6 of the 10 images as a match. This accuracy decreased significantly if the subject's face was distorted, as in turned, rotated, or deformed. With real-world images, the accuracy also decreased significantly. Although the number of correct matches after first choice match decreased, the first choice match did remain correct, assuming a normally taken photograph. In addition to face matching, our program also does face detection. One important thing to note before we begin talking about face detection is that in this program, we can't account for the scale factor of faces in an image, since all the faces in our given database are the same size. Therefore, all new images used in these examples have been resized so that the faces that exist in them are the same size as the faces in our database. So remember how an input image has a Euclidean distance from each database image that showed how good of a match it was? Well, a good way to compare one image's facial characteristics with that of another image is to find the average of these distances. Let's use this image, which is made up of 10 different expressions on my beautiful face. Ha! At each pixel, we look at the surrounding pixels as if it were a match image, and then we compare it to our database. When we find the weight average, we store it at that point in a new image. The pattern you see here, we will call the similarity array, where the blackest areas are the areas with the best face match. This is going to take forever. Why? You're averaging the eigenweights at every pixel. One way to speed up the process is to change the scan resolution like so. It will still tell us which spots on the image are more like faces. Jackie's right. I have set the default scan area to 2 pixels by 2 pixels. This, however, will give us less precision when we are determining the center coordinates of each face, which we'll get to soon. Now that we have our similarity array, let's figure out which areas are good for determining the center of faces. We tried doing some absolute thresholds, and although we found good values to work on some images, it was never the same for others. A relative threshold is what we needed. As we show the pixels we kept, we will also show you the original image with the overlay of these areas. The reason, I hope, will become obvious to you. Here are the pixels that are closer to zero than the median. Here are the pixels that are closer than the mean. They look pretty much the same to me. Let's narrow down our results further. Here are the pixels closer than the 25th percentile. Still too big? Here's the 10th percentile. The 5th percentile? The 2nd percentile? This is looking really good. But by the time we get to the 1st percentile, some faces are no longer good enough particularly the rotated faces. No surprises there. Now, we have several lines of code that separate each clump of pixels into neighborhoods. This is complicated, and there's no need to get into it now. Suffice to say, we look for breaks in a string of coordinates. Also, when we isolate neighborhoods, we neglect the ones that are touching the edge. For some reason, clumps like to form there. For each neighborhood, we look at the x and y values of each coordinate and then we average them to find the center coordinates. Then we crop out an image from each center point so it's the size of the images in our database. Then, just for fun, we see how close it is to the other faces. 